Doc Valentino, and I do gaming. This helps just one person get rid of their Joy-Con stick drift. It would be great success. In my last video, we went over a no tolls solution to get rid of Joy-Con stick drift, but my drift did come back uh, after a week or so. There's supposedly another fix out there that we're going to do. I will show you that fix in here, but ultimately I'm gonna show you also how to replace the joysticks altogether, because after I did the supposed permanent fix to the Joy-Cons, I'm still getting a little bit of drift on my right Joy-Con. Now, as I stated in my last video, you can send your Joy-Cons off to Nintendo, but they don't guarantee you're gonna get your same set of Joy-Cons back. So if there's something special, about the model or if you care about the color, uh, you may not get the same ones back that you sent out. Also, no matter how many band-aids there are to get rid of the stick drift, there's nothing like just putting a new joystick in there. They're cheap, you can get them on Amazon, you can get them in a kit that come with the tools and everything. Uh, I'll put a link in the description below that is an affiliate link. So it takes a little bit of all those high margins that Amazon has, gives them to a little guy like me. So go ahead, if you're gonna buy something, please click on the link below and that will continue to help me provide content as a creator. Who doesn't like a little do-it-yourself project? Besides, with a lot of other things in life, if you want it done right, you gotta do it yourself. I'm gonna open up both Joy-Cons because there is a little bit of a difference between the left one and the right one. So let's go ahead and do this. Okay, so I have a pair of Joy-Cons here, the tools that I need, a couple replacement joysticks, and then a couple cardboard cutout pieces from a cereal box. Uh, nothing special, just something with like a cardstock thickness to it. Okay, so I'm gonna set the tools to the side that I don't need right now at the moment. I'm gonna go with the one with the Y configuration. We'll go ahead and open up both of these. And once all the screws are out, you can go ahead and just pop these covers off and open them like a book. You'll notice on the right one, you have an extra little sensor right here. So we'll go ahead and pull that out of the way. Just take note of where that wiring was located. And then we're gonna take our little plastic pry bar here and we'll pop off the battery. Same thing, it'll fold over just to the right hand side. Be careful not to tug on the wires too much. And we're just gonna flip them over like that. And you can see here that they're a little bit different. Obviously, the joysticks are located in different positions on each one, but you can also see that there's different screw configurations. So over here on the left-hand side, this is going to be your regular Phillips screwdriver. You're gonna take out these two screws right here. These other two go straight to the circuit board. So you're gonna have three screws for each one here. those two and one down here. On this one, the screws are gonna be located up top near the trigger. You have one here, one here, and another one down here. Okay, and that's all the screws to take off both of these. You're gonna pull these plastic pieces off. Be careful with the triggers. You may have uh, the one trigger fall off uh, but these are going to flip the other direction. This one here is a little bit tight on the ribbon, so you may have to twist it like that. Uh, if it does come out, it connects right back here. Uh, same with this one. You're gonna flip it over to the right-hand side. Uh, and you do have a little bit longer of a ribbon on this one, so no worries there. Okay, and from here to replace the joystick, it's simply two screws. There is no difference between the left and the right joysticks themselves. They are configured exactly the same. You can see I pushed down here, so that ribbon cable actually pulled out. Uh, and then there's a little gasket there, but it does have a split in it, so it's pretty easy to get that off uh, without any worries. If it does pull up a little bit, you can just push it back down, no big deal. And then the only thing you would need to do is to grab your replacement joystick Stick it right back down, push it through the hole. You would put your two screws back in. And then this pulled out before I flipped this little flap up, but there is a little black 
there's a little black clip that you can see right here that flips up and that helps clamp this ribbon cable in there. So you would stick this ribbon cable back underneath here. It just slides in ever so slightly and then you can clamp it back down. And then you're done. You put everything back the way it was and you're good to go. I'm actually going to leave my original joystick in the Joy-Cons. And be careful not to tighten these too much. You just need to snug them down. You don't need to be He-Man for them. Okay, and we'll stick this ribbon cable back in. Again, it just slides in a teeny tiny bit. And we'll go ahead and flip that back down. So what we're gonna do, this is my original joystick, like I said, I wanna keep those two as spares. I did replace them in my other set of Joy-Cons, but I'm gonna keep these two as spares. I'm not the one that figured this out, but this is my tutorial for it. But what happens is over time, these clips loosen up a little bit and the wear and tear on the inside of the joystick actually cause the contact of the joystick to the sensors not to work very well. We'll see how it works over time, but I am willing to bet that it's a much better fix uh, than just cleaning up your joysticks because that only lasted about a week or so. <laughs> now, if you're replacing the joystick on the left Joy-Con, you would have to pull this ribbon out that's connected right here to get to that screw safely without damaging that ribbon. Uh, so just take note of, of that. Aside from that, we're good to go on everything else. So we're just going to put it back uh, the way we took it apart. So this one here uh, was a little bit funky, right? With that ribbon, you just have to be careful not to pull it out. Be careful for this not to slip. You can use some rubber cement or something on this to get that to stick or a thin piece of double-sided tape. All right, and then my R button fell off here, so I need to slide it back in. You need to make sure that this spring goes on this little ledge here so that it's going to spring back up. But once you have it in place, you can basically put this over top of it. And you can see that my cardboard slid a little bit, so I'm just gonna use my tweezers here to line that back up. And then we'll grab our three screws and stick them back in. Again, do not over tighten the screws. Once you have the screws in on the right hand side, you're gonna take this little sensor and slide it back down. You'll be able to see there's a couple plastic pieces right here, little slots that that needs to slide back into. And then the wire goes in this little channel right along here. The battery you can flip back in making sure that the wires go into the slot on this side and then from there it's just a matter of flipping this back closed and snapping it together and then putting your screws back in again with the Y screwdriver All right, and on the right one, you're gonna follow the same steps here. Uh, let's get my three screws there. You're gonna go ahead and flip this one back over this direction, making sure that everything goes back and aligns the way it's supposed to. And then the battery here, you just flip back over. And on the left-hand side here, you do not have the extra sensor that goes right here. And then you can flip this back closed, line it up here, snap it together, and throw your Y screws back in. And then that's it. I'm a gamer all around. I don't fanboy any particular console or PC or pit them against each other. We'll do some comparison videos on this channel, sure, to see which is better in certain aspects, but they all have their pros, they all have their cons. Sometimes they all deserve criticism, and at times, all of them deserve credit. So if you're a gamer, I'd appreciate a like and subscribe. I have some unboxing videos coming up. I think I screwed up on the lighting whenever I did them, but we'll see how it goes. I haven't had a chance to review the video yet, but we're gonna get into an Oculus Quest 2. I also bought a new cooler for my PC that I unboxed that 
I'm gonna maybe try to make a video on actually installing that into my PC. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I will see you in the next video.